you know, and you're getting this thing in the helmet, you're getting this notification, this audio notification, make a U-turn, make a U-turn, go back, make a U-turn, and it drives you crazy. Well, good morning, YouTube. This is Cruise Man. Just about to take a little ride here on the Goldwing. You'll notice a big difference in my latest moto vlogs I'm leaving from my house. And obviously that's because I uh, can no longer go to Einstein's for my morning coffee because they're not uh, still not allowing people in their dining room. So I've been having coffee at home for the last few weeks much to my chagrin. I was hoping that they were going to open up last Friday because Texas lifted its restrictions on in-restaurant dining. But Einstein's decided to continue to only offer carry-out and delivery. So Don and I were going to meet for coffee Saturday morning and Instead, we met on Sunday and we just took our coffee over to some patio seating at a restaurant a few doors down and just sat there and had a nice little conversation. But I've got a few things to share with you today. First of all, I want to thank you for joining these motovlogs. I get tons of emails and comments. It's always a mystery as to which videos get the a lot of traffic, a lot of views. Some videos you get a ton of views, other videos you get hardly any views, and it's really been it's really a challenge to kind of figure out. You know, I don't really think it has much to do with the keywords or the thumbnail. I don't know. It just, it's just really strange. Some videos just do great. But the video I did uh, last week on, uh, I think it was titled, Am I the Only One, has really got a ton of views. And also my Garmin Zumo XT video, my review video and my first impressions videos have done very well. So I want to thank all of you, and I also want to remind you that just because I ride a Honda Goldwing doesn't mean this channel is just for Goldwing owners. Anybody who rides a motorcycle, or even if you don't ride a motorcycle, maybe you're just interested in the sport, or maybe you're just interested in what I have to say, period, more than welcome to uh, be a part of this uh, group. In fact, I got a nice message from uh, Larry Carvano, who rides a uh, 2019 Harley. I think it's a Fat Bob. I'm not sure if I, I can't remember. My memory's not that good, but he put in a comment saying that he follows my channel, and even though he doesn't ride a Goldwing, he still enjoys uh, what we have to talk about. So, Larry, you and your fellow Harley riders are always uh, welcome here. I'm going to share a little bit more detailed information today on this uh, Zumo XT that you can see down here. I made a few notes because some of you have posted questions on my review video or you posted comments and you wanted some clarifications on some features that I didn't really cover in probably in enough detail. You know, it's hard when you're trying to keep a video under a certain amount of time I usually don't try to ever go over 20 minutes unless I just can't avoid it because people's attention span just doesn't, you know, a 20 minute video is a long video. So I try to get as much as I can in in that amount of time and then if there's anything I left out, I look at the comments and I read what you want to know more about and I'll cover it in a motor vlog like I'm doing today. So today I'm going to answer a few questions. Brian Albee posted a couple of really good questions. And 
he wanted to know about how water resistant this new XT is. And uh, because he said he has ridden in the rain a lot with his other GPS and it seems to hold up fine. And all I can tell you is I haven't ridden in the rain with this one yet, but Garmin does claim this is IPX7 rated. And I looked it up and what that means is this device should be able to withstand being submerged underwater up to one meter of water, which is about three feet, for up to 30 minutes and not sustain any damage. So I would say that this model is more than weatherproof enough as far as water, moisture proof enough uh, to you know, withstand whatever a ride on a motorcycle in the rain would uh, provide. So I don't think uh, moisture proof is a, an issue for this. Now Brian brought up another question is he wanted to know about the waypoint skipping. Now let me explain to you what that means in a kind of a real world example. Let's say you're riding on a route. Not just riding around town normally, but you have a route planned out with waypoints where you want the GPS to notify you when you arrive at a waypoint, which is what we do with base camp or what we do with the uh, built-in trip planner. You're going down the highway and you either miss the waypoint or you go past it or you go off your route you create a route and you plan to stop at a gas station in a certain town and you've placed that gas station as one of your waypoints which is a place you plan to stop the GPS is going to try to get you to go to that gas station and have you stop and adhere to your route but let's say you're riding along and you decide for whatever reason you don't need to stop to get gas. You got plenty of gas. And you just want to skip that waypoint. Well, normally if if you're riding and you go past that waypoint, the GPS is going to say, uh, you know, next chance next time you have a chance make a U-turn or make a right turn. It's going to try to route you back to that waypoint so that you can satisfy the route that you've created. Now what the XT does, because I tested it the other day, it will alert you twice to go back to that waypoint. And after the second warning, it will bring up a screen that asks you if you want to skip that waypoint. This is a very, very powerful feature. There's also a waypoint or a next waypoint icon on the screen when you're on a route and even before you get to that waypoint you can click on that icon and you can tell it to skip the next waypoint so they've really thought through how to deal with this on this Garmin XT I know that when the first time I did a route with my built-in Honda GPS uh, I went by a waypoint and for 20 miles the GPS kept saying you know, and you're getting this thing in the helmet, you're getting this notification, this audio notification, make a U-turn, make a U-turn, go back, make a U-turn, and it drives you crazy. And it took me forever to figure out on the Honda GPS how to get rid of that waypoint so that you don't get that warning. It's a simple process with this Garmin XT. It's very, very nice, very well, very well executed the way they did it. Now, Bob Donlan and Motobike both posted the same question. What about this glossy screen, this, this reflective screen? Does it get a lot of reflection? And uh, how does that work with the uh, reflectivity of this screen? And yes, it does. It does get some reflection and a little bit of glare. But you can easily adjust it to compensate for that. And the, the benefits of this glossy screen far outweigh, and it's a TFT screen I should also mention, the benefits of this screen far outweigh any negatives. You know, you can't let the perfect be the enemy of the good 
or in this case, the extremely good. And I'm telling you that I would not trade this screen for any other Garmin GPS I've owned. And I've owned, I think, three or four of them. So yes, you do get a little bit of reflection. Uh, you can compensate for it, but the screen is so bright, you can still see what's on the screen anyway. Now, in my video, there's a couple of things, really important points I left out on the review video and on my installation video. In my review video, I mentioned to you that Garmin does not include the little plastic rain cover for the cradle. And I guess when I was shooting the video for the installation, I just completely overlooked the little... They have a little rubber cap they include. They don't, in, they don't include a plastic cover anymore, but they do include a little rubber uh, cover that you just keep on the cable down below the GPS, and then when you remove it from the cradle, you just stick that little rubber cover up there over the contacts, and it protects them from any rain. So I should have mentioned that in the review video. I just completely forgot it. One of you brought it to my attention. Thank you. I don't. I didn't make a note of who it was, but that was a very important point that I left out. I also talked in one part of the review video about the cool feature where you could tap on the image of the vehicle and get the current location so that uh, you could save it as a saved location and easily route back to that location. But what I failed to mention is that's also a huge safety feature of this GPS. For example, let's say your motorcycle breaks down and you're on the side of the road, but you don't know where the hell you are, either in town or out of town. By clicking on that icon, you get the exact GPS coordinates of where you're currently located. So if you needed uh, either a tow truck or emergency services of any kind, you could very easily tell them exactly where you are. That's why it gives you the closest intersection and the uh, closest address to where you're located. I completely forgot about the safety aspects of that feature. And that's why on that same screen, you'll see the uh, police station that's listed nearby, uh, just in case you need assistance. Either you had an accident or your bike broke down or, or whatever. Or maybe you saw somebody else that had an accident and you had to stop. And you had to tell them how to get to where you are. Well, if you've got the GPS coordinates, you can tell them exactly where you are. I also should have mentioned in the review that compared to my 595LM, uh, this Garmin XT does not have the TPMS feature. Garmin has its own uh, tire pressure monitor sensors, and on the 595, you could monitor your tire pressure through the GPS. It was actually a nice feature. I never used it, uh, but it was a nice feature to have and they no longer offer that on this XT. Now, a couple of you have emailed me or messaged me and asked me, why do you think Garmin left that out? And I think it's pretty obvious. They're trying to keep the cost of this unit down under $500. My 595LM was close to $700. So they took away a few features. Now, another thing that this Garmin XT has that I failed to mention is what's called an incident notification and you can set up one of the contacts on your smartphone as the person to be notified if this Garmin XT uh, identifies an incident and I don't know what they call an incident I'm assuming they're saying an accident so it must have sensors in the unit that if you fall over or if you have an impact or some sort of accident, it can detect an incident, in which case it will, through your smartphone, send, I think it sends an email, I'm not sure if it sends an email or makes a phone call, to notify whoever you've identified as the person to notify in case of an incident but I can't find any detailed information on what it considers to be an incident or how it does detect an incident. I hope to get clarification on that before too long. 
So this will probably be the last moto vlog where I go into more detail about the XT. I, I've got a lot of other stuff I need to talk to about. I got some other reviews coming up, reviews on this seat that I'm testing out. I also just received a couple of days ago the brand new Cena 50S and I will be installing that and giving that a test here in the very near future so keep your eyes out for that so anyway i appreciate you joining me today thanks again for uh subscribing to all my subscribers much appreciated and i will see you next time on the next cruise man's motor vlog if you enjoyed this video please take a second to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. And if you click the little bell icon, YouTube will notify you when we come out with new videos. Thanks again for joining us on Cruise Man's Garage.